Hello, everybody. It's Wilson on this Thursday. That was Crate Aerosmith featuring Back Tobacco. KRWF 95.9, RadioFreeFargo.org. We're streaming everywhere on this blue and green marble. We can get into your ear hole, and I like to do that. So thank you for joining me. Kind of talking to you with Wilson. I'm Wilson. Welcome. We talk about cannabis legalization, the benefits of cannabis, general cannabis news, and we'll throw a fun one in for fun. You know, and it's kind of a slow cannabis week, so who knows what I'm going to pull out to talk about. So stick with me. And we're going to do it. 420 will open a big fat bag of cannabis news. So stick around for that. Right before me and directly not right before. But the thing before me that wasn't Fred spelled with a P. That's the AI robot that spins the tunes when a human isn't in here. Is the country show in the morning with Travis. So if you like that ding, 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 ding. Tap in with your boy Trav in the mornings, Monday through Friday. Then you got Stinky Arts Music Mart after me. Mixtape, then Artemis Blood Shrine. Wraps up your Thursday. Dare I say you forget the other days. Don't do that. There's other days. Check out those other days. But this day, Thursday, I come in, 4 o'clock, 4.20, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And that is happening today, my friends. I hope you're staying warm. It's going to be almost in the 40s for you upper Midwesterners. Now, if you're in uh, Ecuador, you know, you're wearing sunglasses and I hate you. It's okay. I'll see you guys in a couple weeks, all right? Try to keep everything, you know, safe a little bit, you know? Maybe keep the Coke pistol popping down, you know? Maybe some, you know, minimize the hostage taking while I'm there, you know, just maybe two a day or something, you know? Because, I mean, I got to go to the mall. I got to, you know, I got to I gotta be out there, dog. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with cannabis. I believe God created cannabis for us to use as we see fit, and I show him props every Sunday, of course, Wednesday, too. 417 Main Avenue, Antioch Church, Apostolic Pentecostal Church here in town. 10 a.m. recovery, 11 a.m. worship. Come on through. If you got a monkey on your back or you've kicked said monkey off your back, but you can feel that little banana eater pulling on your pant leg, 10 o'clock recovery class, we can help you out. Actually, he can help you out. Anyway, this show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. 1,200 megs of CBD, locally grown hemp, whipped up into some stuff for your outer body. You just rub it on your outer body. You got problems on your outer body. Body butter, gotcha. Black Cottage Alchemy, thank you for sponsoring this show. You're listening to Radio Free Fargo 95.9, KRFFLP Community Radio. You a business owner? You manager? Got a nonprofit organization? Consider an advertising. Why not learn what underwriting is on a nonprofit community radio station instead? To learn more about what underwriting is, please contact us at our website, www.radiofreefargo.org, or at our profile on Facebook. Why not let listeners know that you support the community by supporting a community radio station like this one, 95.9? Well, friends, I believe I should probably play a song, but I feel like. It's too soon. I just I just got to talking. I just got to talking. Uh, I got some feedback. You guys like the uh, dog eating story last week, you freaks. I figured I'd get a little kickback, but uh, it is kind of because it's kind of shocking. It's kind of shocking, you know, but culturally, I mean, I mean, some of the things your grandparents, grandparents ate. Just so they could get the nutrients to make your ungrateful hind end, sir. You'd be freaked out. But again, I forget the name of the stew, but it's like, I mean, man, oh man. It's just, just to think of the, how appalled, you know, the, uh, the younger generation sitting unbeknownst to them at grandma and grandpa wine, noing, doings Christmas time. And they're like, what is this great stew? What is this? And it's like, ah, it's kind of mutt, you know? It's kind of a mix of a schnauzer. It's like, what? It's insane. But anyway, kind of talking to you with Wilson every Thursday. 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And uh, you can rest assured that can happen. That's going to happen. It has to happen. If it don't happen, then what? All right. So we're going we're gonna to play some tunes in for you. All right. This is a classic R.L. Burnside. Let my baby ride. 95.9. Don't you let my baby ride. R.L. Burnside here on KRWF 95.9, RadioFreeFargo.org. We're doing a can of talking to you with Wilson every Thursday. 420 is looming, and we're going to talk about some stuff pertaining to cannabis. 
then. So, you know, you don't want to hear me talk about this next thing, and I assure you, you do. Well, then you go do something. Come back, 420, we'll do it. All right? So, uh, come on through. So, anyway, uh, it's been cold, and so I hope everybody's been bundling up. And I got a story for you here that uh, is a real is kind of kind of crazy. All right, just let me even just read you the stinking the title. You know something funky's coming. All right, eBay fined millions of dollars for employees who sent live spiders, cockroaches to Massachusetts couple. Ah, uh, yeah, I said that. Let's do it again. eBay, they had uh they got a big old fat fine, million dollars, millions, three dollars, three million in back. Because employees were sending live spiders, cockroaches to this couple. Now, why in the world would they do that? Well, that's a good question. Thank you, sir. We're going to figure that out right now. Years after eBay employees harassed the editors of an online newsletter with live spiders, cockroaches, and other by mail horrors, which we'll talk about. The online commerce giant has been handed a hefty court-ordered $3 million bill to pay. So you know they stink and did it, right? So online retailer eBay will incur a multi-million dollar court-ordered payout to avoid further prosecution criminally after eBay employees terrorized a couple who published a critical newsletter of the company. Basically, eBay sucks, all right? I, I'm, I'm assuming, okay? A troll, they say. A court ruling handed down Thursday reported on by the AP showed that eBay will pay three mail a mail after employees in 2019 reportedly resorted to stalking uh, and harassing David and Ina Steiner, who produced an online newsletter called Doesn't Matter. That's not what it's called, but it doesn't matter. An eBay executive at the time described Ina Steiner and her reporting as a biased troll who needs to get burned down. And by burned down... We'll see what's happening. eBay engaged in absolutely horrific criminal conduct. The company's employees and contractors involved in this campaign put the victims through pure hell in a petrifying campaign aimed at silencing their reporting and protecting the eBay brand. eBay employees reportedly sent the couple boxes of live spiders and cockroaches, a bloody pig mask, which, you know, everybody loves getting that in the mail, a funeral wreath, which... Yeah, that's pretty funny. And a book about coping with the loss of a spouse. Again, horrible. Kind of funny. In addition to this, the Steiner's address was posted online with invitations for strangers to attend yard sales and parties and such. Whatever, you know. We're giving away free pianos here at 2119 Oak Street, Massachusetts. This was all in addition. Oh, see, see, that's what trips me out. This is all in addition. Okay, this is above and beyond what they actually do. <laughs> so this was all in addition to somewhat less egregious tactics, which included the Steiners receiving threatening messages and strange emails from random groups like irritable bowel syndrome support groups and the Communist Party of the U.S. <laughs> I'm really digging these eBay cats, but I mean, for three million dollars, if that's what you want to spend your money on, bruh, but. I wouldn't. Messages from former CEO and other leadership executives showed a coordinated campaign to harass the Steiners. Man, this it apparently goes all the way up. For instance, about a half hour after the Steiners published an article about a lawsuit where eBay accused Amazon of stealing their vendors, court records show that they sent another eBay executive a message that said, if you're ever going to take her down, now is the time. eBay leadership has since changed hands, and new CEO Jamie said in a written statement that the company has taken steps to prevent such bizarre events in the future. Since these events have occurred, new leaders have joined the company, and eBay has strengthened its policies, controls, and training. eBay remains committed to upholding high standards of conduct and ethics to making things right with the Steiners. According to the AP again, uh, the court agreement reached Thursday imposed the maximum financial penalties. Uh, it requires an independent monitor to oversee company actions for three years to ensure compliance with federal law. Oh, man. So the Steiners expressed disappointment that more executives were not criminally charged. They said the actions taken by EBA employees had a damaging and permanent impact. OK, so. All right. All right. OK, let's back up. OK, you know how people we people as a people, my people listen, my people. Remember when we as a nation hadn't sued anybody? And we just kind of went next door and like handled it. Remember that? No, of course you don't. But there was a time where we didn't need courts, really. I mean, and I'm not going to get funny. This is this is a cannabis show, but 
we kind of used the Bible to dictate a lot of that stuff, and it seemed to work. You know, and then, I mean, I mean, judges are good. You know, judges are good. Judges are good. But uh, suing you because you just see a paycheck, like I, you, put, you put like a curly in the mac and cheese so you can get like, you know, Chipotle to kick you down. That's the society we're in. And that's the society where they use words like this. This is how you get the courts to give you the maximum. When you express disappointment that more people weren't criminally charged because it had, and I quote, such a damaging and permanent impact emotionally, psychologically, physically, reputationally, and financially. That's all the illies that you could possibly get shunned, you know, stuck with. That you're going to use all the L.Y. words, verily and most, you know, absolutely, reputationally. I mean, the, and it really is just words. But boy, what a what a grouping, right? What a combination of words. Anyway, that's crazy. And the, the key to the story here is, is if you don't like what people are saying to you online, find their address, put a bloody pig's head in it and mail it to them. Just kidding. That sounds like a horrible way to solve that issue. So let's play some tunes. You're listening to Candy Talk ND with Wilson. 420, we're going to open a big fat bag of cannabis news. Stick stick around for that. Music on 95.9, Care Double F, is being underwritten by Orange Records. Orange Records offers a variety of new and used music on vinyl and CD, as well as a large selection of posters, DVDs, and much more. Orange Records buys used vinyl, CDs, and cassettes. Orange Records is located at 641 First Avenue North in downtown Fargo. They are open 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Monday through Saturday and are closed on the Lord's Day. Search Orange Records on Facebook for updates and new arrivals. Let's get into a new song. This is Carlos Santana. And embedded in it is a rap by the rest in peace Daryl of the Run DMC 95.9. Oh, yeah. Let the guitar play. Uh, Let me just say for the record, I don't think this guy from Run DMC is dead. So if he's listening, sorry, Daryl. I don't think he is. But that was Carlos Santana, brand new here on KRWF 95.9, RadioFreeFargo.org. We're streaming everywhere you are. We can get into your ear hole, and we like to do it. But it's 420, so you know what that means. We do this. And that's queuing it up. So you want to get ready, get ready. You got a medical card. Roll to the freezer, get some ice cubes, stick it in the cylinder, you know what I mean. 95.9, it's Canna Talk ND with Wilson, right on the other side of this. Hey, it's Phil from Canna Heads. Like this episode? Hit that like button. And if you enjoy the show, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on cannabis news local and national. Listen live on 95.9 in the Fargo, North Dakota region from 4 to 5 p.m. on Thursday. For our non-Fargo region friends, you can listen on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Canatalk ND with Wilson. Now enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. How you doing? It's 420. It's time to open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And uh, I'm the only one who gets to, probably. Maybe not. Just kidding. There's probably somebody else opening a big fat bag of cannabis However, mine is news. It's news. It's all news. Nothing but the news. I'm here to change the law, not break the law. Can I talk indeed with Wilson? I'm Wilson. Thanks for joining me. Let's get right into it. I'm just going to point at something. And uh, <laughs> anyway, let's go with this one. This is from High Time. Study finds field drug test false positive results lead to wrongful arrest. Now, everybody questions, right? Like, when you got to go into the cup, you know, were you, is this the time, you know? And how many times do, how many times do you, you know, think it happens? Where you're like, well, there's no way I should have tested positive and you still do well i'll tell you tens of thousands of people are wrongfully arrested for crimes based on a false positive from a field drug test each year so count it how many years we around times that by thousands and those are people that shouldn't have had to go through the resulting hemming up of the legal system because they didn't do anything now i don't know what kind of percentage we're talking about but anyway, there's a study. Study, they found that approximately 773,000 of the more than 1.5 field drug tests conducted. And I don't know what that 1.5 is. That's half a drug test. 
I mean, what are, what are we just, you just didn't use the cup? They went on the ground and you stuck a meter in there? What are we talking about, 1.5? You're going to get me with fractions, sir. Conducted in the U.S. each year, performed with color-based presumptive tests, despite known reliability issues, including false positives that incorrectly indicate the presence of controlled substances. Although the exact error rate for the test has not been determined, of course it hasn't. The data suggests that about 30,000 people who do not possess drugs are falsely implicated by the test each year. 30,000. That's like half a gram forks every year. Getting hemmed up. Paying fines into the system. Propping up. That's free money the government made there. Every year, tens of thousands of innocent Americans are arrested on the basis of a $2 roadside drug test kit that are known to give false positives. Now, I reported a while back how a lot of these testing systems aren't including THC in their new 10 strips. So, haul at you, boy. Anyway, based on the study, we look forward to working with law enforcement and other interested parties to implement policies and adopt better testing techniques. And again, you always... I say this all the time. If you can't tell, get back in your car, officer. I mean, if I mean, it's like well, it's so hard to find out if they're driving under anything or not. Well, if it's so hard to test them for it, then then forget about it. You know, just be like testing for I don't know how many candies you ate. You know, I'm that's just crazy to me. You know. I mean, because you never really pulled over, like, for any particular kind of reason that would be indicative of lack of sobriety, really. You know, like drunk driving. They're way on the side of the road. They're knocking cones off, you know. The one other guy, he's up on the sunroof. He's got no pants on. He's shooting like a Nerf pistol back at the cops trying to chase them, right? That's the alcoholic idiot doing that stuff. You don't need a test. We don't need to decide, well, we got. how are we going to figure out if that guy should be driving? Well, he's... Again, he's he's knocking those cones down and he's in the parking lot of a McDonald's, you know, doing circly things and shooting the nerve pistol at the drive through workers. You know, so I, I, I think this whole drug testing thing, I mean, is an old draconian way because you can't prove it. So nearly 90% of prosecutors surveyed by the researchers said the guilty pleas are permitted in their jurisdictions without verification of a field test by an accredited toxicology lab. Presumptive, presumptive field drug test kits are known to produce false positives and were never designed or intended to provide conclusive evidence of the presence of drugs. So about two-thirds of the drug labs in a national sample reported that they were not asked to verify the results of a positive in cases resolved by a plea agreement. Oh, so they don't pursue it any further if there's a plea agreement. See them city slickers, them stinking criminals. All right, so here we got another one from High Times. Wiz Khalifa, Hyatt Parent Teacher Conference. He quotes, they know what's up. I don't know, yo. We, we, we get into this. Wiz explained that he's chill with going to parent teacher conference, stoned. I mean, if you call it stoned or high as a kite, well, that seems like you sound like an idiot, bruh. But if you're like, well, I get medicated so I can be more present and, you know, because, I mean, I need to hear what's going on at that parent-teacher conference. I don't need to be looking at that shirt, you know, the shirt that the teacher's wearing. Oh, oh look at her. She got, like, little unicycles on there. And it's like, meanwhile, she's saying, like, your kid really needs to focus on, you know, learning her blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I can't focus because I decided not to medicate before coming to this you know, it's, it's it's stupid when you call it stone. But yeah, get all lit up before you. Woo! That's not what we're talking about here. Now, it might be what Wiz is talking about, but it's not what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> because I think medicatively, if you utilize it in your day to day, well, then then you're going to be using it for that. So <laughs> Wiz continues to be an example for stone parents showing them the way through his close relationship with his son. Which is so close, he claims later in the article that his son probably smells like cannabis. Which is, again, that is crazy things to say about when you're when you're famous and you're rich and you're happy and you know it. You know, flick your gland. For the adventurous, there are places you'd be surprised to have a fun high. No visine needed. High at church. High at the gym. Uh, the rapper explained that in 2024, smoking cannabis is not so much of a big deal anymore, and he doesn't feel judged. My damn. Since smoking cannabis is an all-day, every day for him, 
especially if he's stoned during parent-teacher's conference. He goes, absolutely, I'm pulling up stoned. He goes, they expect it. They know what's up. It's not like back in the day where you're considered a bad parent if you smell like cannabis. I, man, I don't know. I think you're still going to get judged, bruh. But again, there's we've made leaps and bounds when it comes to being discreet, you know? I mean, if, if you drink coffee, they can probably still smell it on you. But you know what I mean? Like you use it to wake up. You don't want everybody to go, oh, here's that guy that used coffee to wake up. Who just smell all that coffee on him. It just, it, it's unnecessary. Really, because, again, I've been a huge proponent. You take the smell away, you can't tell. I mean, unless you're an idiot. Then, no matter what you do, people are going to be able to tell you're an idiot. It's just what idiots do. They be out there, you know, idiots being, you know, idiot. (laughs) Yes, that's a real word, Sam. Anyway, that's not how I'm going to be living my life ever, says Wiz. So, anyway... (laughs) Yeah, so Khalifa also said he's pretty sure his 10-year-old son smells like cannabis. Last May, Wiz was spotted taking Sebastian to the Spider-Man world premiere. And uh, I, I cannabis, he says, I smoke it all day. I wake up, I get high. I'm more like on the low now. I like to get high and be high. All right, but it, he went on. So anyway, he says, cannabis kind of just helps me slow things down and think about them a little more, which... Uh, here here when i'm creative i can be thinking really fast the idea is just shoot all over the place but if i if i'm utilizing cannabis i can hold on to it imaginatively which doesn't sound like a problem anymore and if you can also utilize that to be present and listening to what the teacher is saying about your child instead of focusing on anything but that like like the fact that he didn't get his collar right now you're working on his sleeves because he's got like some bugs on there or something and so for people that can utilize it to stay focused it's, it's very beneficial, I think. But anyhow, there's that for you. Now, there's a Maryland police. This is from Ganjapreneur. Maryland police chief says rule against cannabis use is bad for recruiting. <laughs> and it's not even what you think. This guy is the opposite of what you think. The police chief said a state rule that bans police recruits from having used cannabis for at least three years before applying is bad for the recruitment opportunities. And it's just crazy how we've turned on this platform. And now we got the police chief, right? A stinking police chief is now saying, let's stop shortening when the last time you used this. We want to hire you now, bruh. Oh, you just, you, you utilized some cannabis last night and now you're fine? Sorry, can't hire you. You got it's got to be three years. Yeah, yeah, three hundred fifty-six times three, whatever that is. Yeah, that's how long. And then they would be like, "Wow!" And and then they would scoff and talk down to you. Wow, you you got to use your drugs. You need to be using your drugs. Well, you can't wait three years to be a cop. Now all of a sudden, the police chief he's going, "Hey, wait a minute. Why are we being so rigid, right?" And I say, "Absolutely." So here's what he says. He says, I think in today's environment where we are with the legalization, where we are with the legalization of cannabis that has now restricted law enforcement agencies, particularly larger agencies across the state. It has restricted law enforcement agencies. It's and here's the here's the thing. He said in a report that making off duty use of illegal drug into a barrier. Off duty use of a legal substance into a barrier. He said, around the state seems like a bad policy. It is. There's so many bad policies. I uh, could spend the next 45 minutes talking about them. Just kidding. I've made them all up. I have no idea what other bad policies are. I haven't thought about it. The commission has said it would investigate the issue. Many states with legalization have enacted policies to prevent employers from refusing to hire someone based on their past cannabis use. And again, I mean, it's like they're slowly catching up with what we all knew all through the 90s and championed. You know, so if you're younger than me, you can thank me for making sure that, you know, cannabis legalization stayed on the, you know, stayed on the burner. But things have definitely changed because I can assure you in my day, 1991, the year of no doubt. Sorry, I'm not home right now. I'm walking in the spider web. Police chief from Montgomery, Maryland says that we need to not cap it at three. The police chief. The head prick, essentially, of your county. 
when you talk about negatively, because he's always, you know, harsh in your buzz, bruh. But hey, not anymore. Now the police chief is standing up for it. And that's crazy to me, I think. So let's see what else we got here. This one sounds kind of spicy. Let's talk about this cannabis moment. Marianne Williamson accuses congressional lawmakers of using drugs and slams hypocrisy of delayed cannabis reform. I didn't realize uh, Marianne Williamson, uh, man, what, is she single? I don't know. I'm just kidding. She looks kind of old. Maybe she is. I'm old. I got a birthday this year. Maybe you guys do, too. It happens. Marianne Williamson sharply criticized the Biden administration and Congress for slow walking cannabis reform, accusing lawmakers of hypocrisy for failing to legalize cannabis. In a campaign event in New Hampshire, Williamson took questions on her drug policy reform. She re- reiterated her commitment to legalizing it and psychedelics, which, again, I mean, I don't know what I think about them when it comes to you know, utilizing it as therapeutics. I mean, it just seems to be getting a lot of a lot of promising results, you know, to where one state, the governor said, let's just let them grow mushrooms and get it right away and then we'll figure it out later, you know, because he didn't want to, he didn't want to ignore the potential, especially for vets, you know, because apparently psychedelics really helps with PTSD and and so he's like, well, let's just let them try it quick, which, again, I've always been a proponent of that. You know, who are we to tell them what's good for them? I mean, we were cool with them, you know, protecting us. But now all of a sudden we want to, you know, protect them from what we think is bad. It's it's crap. And so hopefully things can change. One of the first things she would do is deschedule. She said it's ridiculous. Deschedule it. Not only let everyone out of prison. But also expunge those records. But we'll talk about that, though. I mean, expungement. Missouri's asking for it. We'll pull it up right now. Missouri courts asked for $3.7 million to continue expunging past marijuana convictions. They've already gotten all kinds. All right. Missouri Circuit Courts have cleared more than 100,000 cannabis charges from people's criminals records so far. A mandate that was a big selling point. Now, in my opinion, I don't know. I mean, maybe this is what we're talking about, reparations. If I pay for the paperwork, but then the taxes, because there's so many people that are like, how in the world should we be taking our tax dollars to be paying for these? I mean, it was a crime back then. You committed the crime. And again, it ain't that. I mean, what they make it. I believe it was another kind of money scam, to be honest, you know, just a funnel money, because a lot of us don't care that we have records. Really? I mean, I, I could care less. You know, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of more concerned with what God thinks about me and what I'm doing, you know. So anyway, I think this is crazy. And so last year, lawmakers, they signed off on four point five million for state courts. They approved an additional two point five million. So there's like so much money being given for this expunging. And I just I. I wish I could understand its importance, you know, because I'm having a hard time with it. So anyway, she would deschedule. And then she goes, there's a 200 page document from HHS saying we've been lied to about cannabis. Can you believe it? How long do you think it's going to take? Let me tell you what you have with me, a signature of the president of the United States. So. She goes, she ridiculed the idea that Congress would follow up on the rescheduling recommendation with hearings about cannabis. Now, check this out, she says. Do you know how many of those people do drugs, she said. I don't know how many, ma'am. The hypocrisy of this situation. Well, how many How many drugs are they doing? I mean, how? why would you say that and then not tell me more? Later, Howard Wooldridge of Citizens Opposing Prohibition, cop, which is nice, retired police officer, very witty, Howard also asked the candidate about her drug policy stance. Howard's a lady saying while he appreciates her proposal to broadly decrim, the unregulated market will still be able to capitalize off it without regulating the supply. So. Let's see, we have spent one trillion dollars and continue to spend a hundred billion dollars annually on the drug war. And, And that is crazy. And that is crazy. So. Let me talk to you guys a little bit about Minnesota here, and then we'll get out of here. 
You've been listening to Canada Talk and D with Wilson. I'm Wilson. 420, I opened a big fat bag of cannabis news, and we're up to my nipples in it so far. If you're just now joining me, welcome. Minnesota cannabis regulators recommend fixes to legalization law to speed up licensing and open minimum of 381 retailers. Because apparently that's how many, based on the 12,000 population number, like it's for every 12,500 people, they get a, they get a, whatchamacallit, dispensary. So they think they're going to need more than that, but uh, we'll find out. Uh, for example, so the data offers a baseline that could help policymakers better understand and navigate the reform. Uh, so a lot of this stuff hasn't been implemented yet, but again, you can still legally grow and have. For example, with only a handful of tribally owned cannabis retailers, majority of residents who participated in the survey, Minnesota asked for you guys to do a survey. So this is the results of you guys doing it. Uh, where were they getting it? Now that it's legal, uh, family and friends, 67.6%, low THC hemp shop, 61%, and illicit seller, 53%, medical cannabis, 42 These findings are not common in other states as adult use, possession, and gifting laws become effective, and the perceived risk of criminality is reduced while adult use sources are not available. Importantly, these data suggest an overall prevalence of obtaining cannabis from a dealer and illicit source, which stands to reason as legal adult use sources are not fully available. Right. So, for instance, the uh, highest proportion of cannabis obtained by participants was from a dealer, 17.6%. And participants reported the highest likelihood of visiting a dealer more than once a month to purchase cannabis compared to other sources. And I read somewhere here that a lot of people were buying about an ounce a month, which that seems like a stinking lot. So 2025 is when they're planning on being done, and we'll see about that. Uh, this is a quick shout-out. American Nurses Association cheers federal health agencies' cannabis rescheduling recommendation. And when the huge, I mean, how many nurses is in this thing? Five million registered nurses are part of American Nurses Association. And for them to get behind cannabis is really, I think they did it last year, is one of the biggest kind of progress pushes for medical for sure now check this out and we'll start to wrap things up again i've been talking about this south dakota house passes they passed the bill to find medical cannabis dispensaries that don't warn patients about federal gun bans. so they're going to have to put a sign up we talked about this last week it's going to so there's going to be okay so they've approved a pair of bills to remind patients that the use of medical cannabis can preclude them from lawfully owning firearms under federal law and for those of you listening I believe North Dakota has the same stupid laws. So just think about that, bruh. With the legislation proposing to require notice of the policy on cannabis patient applications added a dispensary which would face daily fines if they don't comply. 68 to 1 vote. The application specific measure passed. But now the dispensary bill with a more divided tally of 4227. And so basically it says this bill does not preclude anyone from getting a medical cannabis card. It doesn't stop anyone. People are free to make their own choices. And I love this but because there's always a but after it. Every time you say I'm free to make my own choices, you say but. People should have the information to make an informed decision. Jensen said that he's been a firearms dealer and trainer for decades, and it's amazing how many people have no clue that this law even exists. The bill to mandate that notices of the federal statute be posted at dispensary entrances and each register with some industry stakeholders. He pointed out a $250 per day fine would incur for noncompliance is half the fine. So here's what the warning says. Warning, federal law prohibits the possession of a firearm by certain individuals who are users of or addicted to cannabis. And I love how it says certain individuals, right? So I don't know what that means. That might be a gray area. That might, you know, that might be a gray area. The legislation would suspend would be suspended if federally. So here's why these idiots think it's cool to do it. The, the, the precedent was comfortably supports the restriction. Cannabis consumers with guns pose a threat to society. The Biden administration claimed in part because they're unlikely, and that's in quotes, to store their weapon properly. So it's like, how can you believe any of that? That's just junk. You know, the firearm ban for consumers is further justified based on historical analogs to restrictions on the mentally ill, habitually drunk that were imposed during the time of the Second Amendment in 1791. I say that's ridiculous. 
and I hope something is uh, changed with that. Cannabis Moment, North Carolina Appeals Court confronts whether smell of cannabis established probable cause for search, and that's primarily because of all of the uh, all of the uh, different cannabinoids and stuff. And Minnesota plans on doing some stuff too. Let's see uh, your homework. Go to the week. It's an article how Israel became the world leader in medical cannabis. If you care. And uh, also, Hub City Radio, South Dakota Senate Committee passed a series of medical cannabis bills. Let's run through them quick. Uh, Senate Bill uh, 1-0, passed 5-0, to zero, requires that a patient's primary care physician is notified when their patient receives a medical card. That seems weird. Uh, a practitioner from referring, for referring a patient to a medical clinic that's an immediate family member. Uh, Senate Bill 71 makes it easier for local law enforcement and government to inspect, search, seize, or prosecute. Well, that sounds horrible. And uh, we'll call that good, y'all. Thank you for joining me on another Can of Talk and D with Wilson. Programming on 95.9, Radio Free Fargo, KRFF LP is being underwritten by Drummer's Journey. Drummer's Journey offers percussion instruments, hardware, electronics, accessories, and more. They have full service for drummers, including repair, custom building, and lessons. Drummer's Journey is located at Highway 10 East Mall in Moorhead, Minnesota. Their hours are Monday through Thursday, 11 to 7, Fridays and Saturdays, 11 to 5, Sundays, noon to 5. For more info, check drummersjourney.com. They have a profile on Facebook. Now, let's do a little songy song. We got some more new stuff. And I still don't know how to stink and pronounce this. This Krang Ben 95.9. Welcome back, my friends. I love international. Krang Ben, that's brand new here on KRWF 95.9. RadioFreeFargo.org. We're streaming everywhere on this round blue and green marble. We can get into your ear hole. And I get into your ear hole every Thursday. 4 o'clock, I get in here. 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. This Thursday was no different. Directly after me, Stinky Arts, Music Mart, Mixtape, then Artemis Blood Shrine. Wraps up your Thursday. Don't forget the other days. They exist this show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. 1,200 megs of CBD, a locally grown hemp, wrapped up into some body butter for your outer body. Do something for your outer body. Thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring this show. I believe God created cannabis for us to use as we see fit. I show him props every Sunday, Antioch Church, 417 Main Avenue. 10 a.m., recovery class. If you got a monkey on your back or you've kicked that monkey off your back, but that little banana eater's pulling on your pant leg, we know the man upstairs can take care of what you got got you down. 11 a.m. worship. Again, I'll be in next Thursday. Uh, looks like we might have a in-house guest tomorrow, next Thursday. Um, I'm hoping to have my brother in studio. He's just recently went through the medical program. As a vet, I think it's time we did kind of like a, a review. It's been a while since... Uh, I've let you guys know how to do that and how it's possible to, as a vet, you know, under federal jurisdiction, you can still get a state medical cannabis card. And then we'll just kind of discuss he uh, suffers from PTSD. And so we'll discuss that as to what they gave him then, you know, what it did for him and how he can see his future utilizing cannabis for, you know, positive reasons, which I've always championed cannabis for vets and for cancer. You know, and for swelling. I mean, I can't believe how little I swole after having 15 teeth pulled one day. I mean, maybe it was less than 15, but it was still a stinking lot. Bah. Anyway, educate yourselves on the benefits of cannabis. You can educate others on said benefits. Up next again, a Stinky Arts Music Mart. I'm out to door. So you guys, you be good to yourselves. And I'll be back in next Thursday again. Plan to... Uh, plan to learn how to get a medical card certainly as a vet or just in general in the state of north dakota we'll start from the beginning to the end how much it costs blah 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 it's gonna be great it's gonna be great so anyway y'all i'm out of here we'll see you next thursday till then david allen judgment day peace